Hello, well here we are in another of the famous landmarks here in Sligo. I'm here near Strand Hill on the south side of Knocknaray Hill in what's called locally here as the Glen. The Glen is a, a valley, it's about 60 feet deep, you can see the sheer rock wall perhaps behind me, 40 foot wide, it runs for three quarters of a mile and in the summer it's a lovely walking spot for your family. At the moment it's quite wet, hence the welly boots and the work jacket. We're here in the Glen. If you were to look up the word Glen in your dictionary, the Glen would be a Glen would be defined as a long, secluded, narrow valley. Let us turn to the book of the Psalms in the Old Testament for one verse, Psalm 23 and verse 4. King David says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. We're here in the Glen in Strand Hill. There was a journalist, William Buffoon, back in 1903, and he described the Glen here as a wondrous freak of nature cut off from the rest of the world. There's an abundance here of flora and fauna, honeysuckle, holly tree, bramble bush, etc. But this is a valley, and we've read here of a valley in Psalm 23. David knew what he was speaking about. He says, I'm walking through the valley of the shadow of death. David was one day going to be king of Israel, but in the meantime, Saul, the present king, sought every opportunity to kill him and laid traps for him. He describes himself as a partridge hunted on the mountains in another place of the Bible. The valley of the shadow of death. We're all walking through life's valley. And maybe there's something today that's casting a long shadow over your life. Maybe it's coronavirus. Maybe you've contracted the virus. Maybe you're afraid of unemployment because of the virus. Maybe, maybe you have other health or family issues. Whatever the case might be, we all can attest at times to shadows that cross life's pathway. What a promise here. What a possession David had. He says, yes, though I'm walking through the valley of the shadow of death, I have no fear of evil. For he says, you are with me. Now David didn't say, as he might have said, I belong to a great religion called the Jewish religion. I can trace my heritage, heritage back to a man called Abraham who came out from Ur of the Chaldees. I have a wondrous heritage. He didn't say that. He said, you are with me. We value relationships here on earth. Relationships are precious to us. What about this relationship? The most precious and important relationship of all. Our problem today as human being, beings is that we have been we have cut ourselves off from the God of heaven because of sin. We are creatures of God by virtue of the fact that he has given us life, but we're not children or sons of God because we're dead, the Bible says, in trespasses and sins. The Bible says we're enemies of God because of wicked works. But Jesus Christ came to offer himself. If you read yourself in the Gospels, you'll see Jesus Christ giving an invitation. He said, come unto me. And I can give you rest. He's not saying like other, other religious founders might say. This is the path of enlightenment. This is what you should do. Here's a list of rules to keep. To achieve perfection and happiness. No he said come unto me and I can give you rest. David says here. About God he says. God he says you are with me. You see. To be made right with our maker. Is not through religion. It's not through what we can do today. That's the reason why Jesus Christ came into the world. To save sinners. We were enemies. We are enemies to God because of our sin. Our sin demands a penalty of payment. But Jesus Christ came and in love to us, he paid the penalty himself on the cross. If we trust him, that relationship will be instantly mended. Those sins of our past will be for forever forgotten and blotted out. And we'll be back again into a relationship that we need, that we were made for. Because remember, ultimately, you and I are made for God. David could say, I will fear no evil. Though the valley be dark, though the way be long, though there are deep, dark shadows crossed, and po crossed my pathway, David could say, I will fear no evil. Do you have Christ today as your personal saviour? Or maybe you just have a religion that's empty, really. Do you have Christ as your personal saviour? I remember the, the day and time when I accepted him as my personal saviour. I was saved, I was born again on a country lane near Ballastadair here. 
and Christ became mine. He became my Lord and Saviour. I surrendered all to him. I trusted him, repented of my sin, changed my mind about myself and my sin and about God. And I, in that very instant of time, was saved. And Christ became mine. Do you have Christ today? Life will be a long, sad, lonely valley without him. And what about the world to come? What about eternity? You know, there's a hymn that says, Eternity, how dark without him. Only night and tears. And endless woe. I hope you'll consider this verse today. Let me read it once more to you. What a lovely promise. Psalm 23. Verse 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, David says. For thou art with me. Thou art with me. I'm thinking just now of the Apostle Paul. He's coming to the end of his life. He's in a dark dungeon awaiting execution. He says, I know. You say, what could a person know at a time like this except they're very soon going to die? He says, I know where I'm going. I know who I've trusted. I know there's a bright, heavenly, happy future before me. I'll see Christ my Saviour. Could you say that today? We're walking through the valley of the shadow of death and life, all of us just now. When death comes... And when you step out into the eternal world, do you have a hope? Do you have an anchor? Do you have a certainty? Do you have Christ as your personal saviour today? You can trust him today and come to know him. Come to believe on him. And then you could say like David could say here, and that I can say personally, I fear no evil. Well, troubles may come and life may be difficult, but ultimately and finally, I fear no evil for Christ is mine. He is with me. He is my Lord and saviour.